relating to how we got here to this point, read by students from the Friends School of Portland. Today is a special day. We are speaking out and taking action. This day might not have ever happened if it weren't for a 15-year-old Swedish girl named Greta Thunberg. Last September, last September, she declared that she would be doing a weekly climate strike in the following words. Our school strike has nothing to do with party politics because the climate and the biosphere don't care about our politics and our empty words for a single second. They only care about what we actually do. This is a cry for help. <laughs> to all the newspapers who still don't write about and report on climate change, even though they said that the climate was the critical question of our time when the Swedish forests were burning this summer. <laughs> To all of you who have never treated this crisis as a crisis. <laughs> to all of the influencers, influencers who stand up for everything except the climate and the environment. <laughs> to all the parties that pretend to take the climate question seriously. <laughs> to all of you who choose to look the other way every day because you seem more frightened of the changes that can prevent catastrophic climate change than the catastrophic climate change itself. Your silence is almost the worst of all. The future of all coming generations rests on your shoulder. Those of us who are still children can't change what you do now once we're old enough to do something about it. Every single person counts, just like every single mission counts. Every single kilo, everything counts. talking about the power of the youth voice. Um, yeah! <laughs> so last night I was talking to my brother and he told me something I found really interesting. As human beings, there are two things that make us innately different than any other species on this earth. And that is our power to have hope and our power to envision the future. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is that for every day after today, and for every week that follows, to have the hope that drove you here today in looking at this climate issue. So much of our time, our conversations around climate change and the actions of our legislators feel so hopeless and so powerless. For this reason alone, I wanna say thank you for being here today. It seems like such a simple thing, but it is truly so powerful. How easy is it for our other classmates, for the adults that are in charge of our legislation to sit idly by while no action is created. Without hope, there wouldn't be more than 1,300 events planned in 121 countries from Argentina to Vanuatu happening across the world today. Without hope, Greta Thunberg would not have been able to compel the EU Jean-Claude Juncker to dedicate every fourth euro spent within the EU budget to go towards climate mitigation. In our own country, without hope, the youth voice would not have been able to bring the Green New Deal onto the U.S. political street stage through the work of the Sunrise Movement, a youth activist group pioneering legislation for the sake of our generation. Without hope, the March for Our Lives would have, not, would have brought nobody to these streets. Without hope, we would be in class today or at home, not part of the international movement which has already shown people in power that our generation is standing tall and not going anywhere. 
So what does this mean? What is our power? And that comes from us. That comes from founding an environmental club at your school. That comes from showing up to events like this. That comes from looking at the issue of climate change as not a question, but as a fact. That comes from blazing our own path and stopping to look at climate change as not a liberal or conservative issue, but as an issue that will impact every single one of us and really, really soon. We are the only ones who get to decide what we say, how we say it, and what it does. But our impacts are only based on our actions. We need to know that when we hear that the seas are rising, that our reliance on fossil fuels is dooming, for the, dooming our economy for the time we become adults, that the most intensive storms and flooding are hitting our country from the impacts of climate change, that we must stand up not only for the children, teens, and young adults of our generation, but for every generation to come after us. I told you when I came up to the microphone that we as humans can do two things really, really well. Those things are the ability to envision the future and the ability to pursue hope. So e through each statistic you hear, remember that the only way we can create real change is if we continue to utilize what we already harness within ourselves and within each other. While the legislators and adults of, con of today can continue the same conversations of polarization, of inaction in the face of need, let us promise to stand together in compromise, to stand in the face of climate change without pessimism, without division, but with hope. And today, tomorrow, and every day, to use your voice to speak with power. Thank you. Okay, so we're looking, we're looking for um, Phoebe McDonald, if she's here. She right there? Okay, can, she, can we make a path for her to come up? Hello, my name is Steve. My name is Phoebe McDonald, and I'm here today because there have been troubles in the world going on for a very long time, and I've been trying to act correctly on it. This is not just a minor problem, it's a major one. We all need to do what's right for the world. This, this is our job. We can't wait for others to do it. If we want, if we want to make a difference, we have to act on our instincts. Everything we do will help or make things worse. But which one do you think you should do? Yeah. I agree. We are we all have the ability to make a difference. We can we can make we can make a difference if we work together. If we work together and if we if we just act. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ferris and I'm Vi. We are members of the Friends School Portland Climate Action Team Youth Environmental Leaders League or YEL for Climate Justice. We are here because we believe change may be hard, but change has to happen. And we care about the future of our planet. Castle Bay is warming 99% than all of our oceans, and we have done continued to do nothing about it for years. We choose to deny the undeniable. We can't delay this problem any more than we already have. There have been three disastrous floods in Maine over the past 10 years, including one here in Portland. We have destroyed roads, homes, and even lives. And other, along with this rain, have been, has some sea levels rising tremendously. There are 150 species of water birds in Casco Bay. Just birds. Imagine how much more sea life there is that we are killing. With every bit of carbon dioxide we put into the air by burning fossil fuels, we are ruining the chan their chance of survival. Just because we are young and because we can't vote doesn't mean we don't have a voice. Thank you. And now, 
a short piece by the Friends School of Portland. people here. This is probably like the biggest rally that we've had. Yeah. 
The catastrophic fear of 12 years until irreversible climate change, species loss, food system collapse, sea level rise, microplastic infestation, and devastating drought has a unique, lethal grip on every one of us. We all have our own stories, our own challenges, and our own fears. And we're in this crucial time where the world we've grown up in, the world we've known and we've depended on for all our lives, is crumbling before our eyes. And on top of that, very little politicians are enacting any change to meaningfully create a solution for this. To stand up against this mega climate empire and address the accumulation of problems brushed under the rug for decades. So here you stand, trying to navigate a complex reality that doesn't seem to make much sense. And immediately you bump into this thing. I like to call it the plastic straw dilemma, where you have to make all these choices about how you are going to do something. Am I going to bring my own reusable cup, my own napkin? Am I going to support this company and ask for no straw? And you hope that you don't get called out the single time you forget your metal straw which is pretty difficult to wash out, by the way, and be called a hypocrite. Luckily, I didn't forget mine today. It's right here. So that's a relief. But that's beside the point. I'm, here to, I'm not here to talk about this tiny metal straw. I'm here to shed a little light on a much bigger straw, the 1,097-mile crude oil-sucking Line 3 pipeline proposed to carry over 800,000 barrels of oil from Alberta, Canada to Wisconsin every day. That's the biggest straw I've ever heard of. Despite the original Line 3 pipeline being responsible for the largest ever oil, inland oil spill in the US in 1992, this proposal by Enbridge Energy is set to go forth in coming months. This capitalist travesty, along with so many others, is proceeding simply because of an immense concentration of power and wealth. According to the Climate Accountability Institute, the top 100 corporations are responsible for over 70% of greenhouse gas emissions. 70%. And while for decades American people were asked to turn off their lights, put on sweaters, pay a premium for greenwash cleaning products, the biggest polluters have been allowed to expand their emissions without penalty. It's high time that the companies that we support stop viewing nature as some bottomless vending machine. We have an economic system that fetishizes GDP growth above all else. But when we talk about outweighing that with the ability to breathe clean air and drink pure water, we obviously need to get a new set of morals. It's time that the people take back the power. See, we're at this tipping point where every one of us can decide Am I going to support this company that treats our shared atmosphere as a free waste dump? Or am, I, or am I going to raise my voice, start a conversation, take it to the polls, vote with my dollars and my fork to keep it local, lobby my representatives, and start speaking truth to power for a livable, breathable, equitable future? It's time that we face the facts. I love this straw, and shout out to anyone else who took the time to be inconvenient to bring theirs today. But we need to switch the script. We need to start standing up to corporate giants, holding them accountable, and start mobilizing at a rate faster than we've ever seen before. I'd like, I'd like to end with a quote by Lovi Ajahi. People and systems count on our silence to keep us exactly where we are. Being the domino sometimes comes down to being exactly who you are. Being yourself can be a revolutionary act, and in a world that wants us to whisper, I choose CL. <laughs> Next up is Kaylee Roach from Kenny Bond High School. Yeah,
Hey guys, so first we're gonna do a chant real quick and then we have two other speakers coming up after that. So, hey, hey, ho, ho, climate change has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho, climate change has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho, climate change has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho, climate change has got to go, hey, hey, ho, ho, climate change has got to go, legislators. But I'm not just here today to stand for environmental protection laws that need to be passed, but I want lawmakers to know that we need to stop repealing climate and conservation policies as well. Since Trump was elected, there have been countless policies repealed. Ones, ones that were there to hold oil and gas companies accountable for their greenhouse gas emissions, ones that were there to protect migratory birds or to protect endangered species or to keep our streams and wetlands clean. And the proposed 30% budget cut that the EPA is currently facing will only result in even less protection for both us and for our environment. We're already seeing the impacts that the loss of these policies and protection are having on our planet, which is why we can't afford to be complacent anymore. <laughs> According to the UN Environment Program, the Earth is in the midst of a mass extinction. Scientists estimate that 150 to 200 species of plant, insect, bird, and mammal become extinct every 24 hours. Insect populations are plummeting at a rate that will result in complete extinction in as much as a century. In Maine, the state with the highest percentage of forested land and a long scene of coastline and an economy centered around hunting and fisheries, Climate change is an immediate concern for every one of you here. It's time that our legislators defend us, even those of us that can't vote. They're sacrificing our futures because they're too afraid to propose practical legislative actions to combat climate change. But I'm afraid of what our future is going to look like if they continue ignoring the detrimental effects of a changing climate. Half a century ago, Congress proved that it could protect the earth from drastic pollution in our air and water. In, in 1987, we helped ratify a treaty banning pollutants to fill the frightening hole in our ozone layer. But today, we're standing idle until the next catastrophe affects our very lives. So until your legislators take action, we will. Thank you for taking action today and continuing to use your voice in the future. By standing together, we can get Congress to make the changes that we know they're capable of making. My name's Emma. Um, I go to USM. I'm majoring in environmental planning and policy with minors in economics and applied energy. Yeah, it's great, right? Um, I'm doing an internship with USM's sustainability de department. I am doing research on air quality, and I'm one of the presidents of the student group. And through every one of those pieces of my environmental career, one of the biggest and most important themes that we need to acknowledge and our government needs to acknowledge is that everything is connected. When you make a change, the environment has to adjust and those adjustments cause more adjustments and we can't ignore that we are changing our environment. Every single day, about 100 million barrels, that's 4 billion, 200 million gallons of oil are mined and manufactured and produced every single day and at the rate that we're going it's estimated that if we keep going like we are that's gonna run out in 20 years and our whole society is built on oil um, as the supply grows smaller we're gonna have to adjust and things are gonna become a lot more difficult when we have to start slowing down our production instead of continuing to grow it that's called peak oil and if any of your students have never heard of peak oil, you need to go to your science teachers and ask them about it and have them teach you about it, okay? Yeah, I'm not kidding, for real, go to your science teachers. I'm really serious. Um, so after peak oil happens, pretty much this is what's gonna happen. Oil prices are gonna rise, 
because there's going to be less demand. This is going to cause huge commodity-based inflation. Our global economy is going to have to slow down. It's going to be harder to fill up your gas tank, pay your heating bill, harder to buy any plastic products, things with ink, especially food. Um, and all of these things are going to cause major life adjustments, and we're going to have to get used to a newer quality of life, essentially. And an important thing to remember when we talk about this is that this is going to disproportionately affect poor communities and minority communities, because they already have enough struggles. Not to mention the fact that those communities are the ones that get stuck with most of our local pollution as it is anyway. So it's going to cause amplified struggle and an increase in inequality. So we need to get ahead before this happens. We need to brace ourselves for the future that's at the end of our tunnel right now. And how do we do this? We change. That's the only way that we do this. We need to invest in cleaner, renewable energy, put money, research, jobs, time, and energy into these renewable practices, sustainability, science, and education. We start building the future that we want and need. These changes, these policies are necessary if we want to protect our environment and protect our way of life and protect the impoverished people all over that are going to be hit so much harder by all of these things. So don't just fight for renewable energy and sustainability for the environment. Fight for it for yourself and fight for it for all the people who either don't have a voice or a platform or don't know better because this affects all of us. So if you fight, if you don't fight for everybody's future, you fight for no one's future. So everybody needs to stand up and speak up and make change, okay? Yeah. All right. So now we're gonna thank you. Now we're gonna finish with a song led by Anna, and I know that a lot of you. Oh, and the French school, and a couple French school students, and a lot of you maybe got little quarter sheets about an event happening in April and the lyrics to this song are on the back. So if you have one of those sheets, please share with your neighbor so we can all join in. Yeah. Woo. So, as I said, hopefully you had a lyrics, whether on the back of your signs or on those quarter sheets. This is called Song for the Climate or Do It Now. We need to wake up, we need to rise up, we need to open our eyes and do it now, now, now. We need to build a better future and we need to start right now. We're on a planet that has a problem, we need to solve it, get involved and do it now, now. It's April 23rd, a day of action in Augusta. We want to get a thousand youth up in Augusta. Sign the, sign the petition.
information circulating through this rally or go on the website at 350 Maine to sign up and join us. Take your emotions here, the tension, the power, and speak to Maine's lawmakers directly. If you have taken photos or videos of this rally, please, I urge you, post them online with the hashtag climate strike or hashtag climate strike Maine or send them to the 350 Maine website. We want all your photos and all your videos. That'd be great. Once again, thank you for your support and presence at this rally.